Today, what we're gonna do is load a whole bunch of photos and make a movie out of that. So the best way to learn how to make a flip movie is to have Cinelera actually render out a movie in the file format that you're gonna import the photos. So let's load a movie that's already been made. Just any old movie. And let's conform that. Let's conform the project to whatever the movie format is. Now let's zoom in to a small region here. And I'm going to render this into a flipbook file format. So we go to File, Render. Let's put it in Temp. This is going to be a JPEG sequence. There's no audio. The video is going to be quality 90. So what this is going to do is export one JPEG photo for each frame of the movie. So now we're not interested in loading the movie back. We're just going to look at the file format. So I'm going to open up a terminal. If we go to our temporary directory, you see these are the JPEG images it generated for the movie. They each start with the file name that I entered, and then they have six digits for the frame number. We're mainly interested in this file. So I load that in a text editor. And what you find here is a description of the file format. This tells Cinelera we're loading a sequence of JPEG photos. The second, the next line that's not commented is going to be the frame rate. The next line is the width. And the next line is the height. And then we have all the photos using their absolute paths. So it's a very simple file format that Cinelera uses for storing movies out of individual JPEG photos. And now that we've revealed this format, let's try what you would do if you wanted to create a new movie out of JPEG photos in the format that Cinelera can read. First of all, the easiest way of doing it is just to go into the file loader, click on the first JPEG photo you want to load, hold down shift, and then click on the last JPEG photo, and you can drag it around. I'm just going to load a few of these to show you what happens. And when you load these in, what it's going to do, if we bring up the info for these photos, it made each photo one second long, and then it pasted each photo into one frame of the timeline. Now, if, if you want to do this with thousands of JPEG photos, the program is going to sit and spin for a long time while it loads every single photo as an individual asset. So there's a better way of doing this. I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to create a file that Cinelera can import, which contains all those JPEG photos as a JPEG sequence. So here's the directory full of photos. I need to create a text file containing all these photos with absolute paths. And the way I do that is with ls-al present working directory and then the star.jpg into our new movie file. So now I want to edit the uh, movie file and get our directory. This is a special text editor which allows me to select blocks of text. So I can remove all the directory information and just have the absolute paths by selecting a block of text and delete that. 
And now we add the header information that we reverse engineered. It's going to be a JPEG list, 30 frames per second. And now it needs the image size. Easiest way of getting the image size is just by loading an image in an image viewer. So these are going to be 2496 by 1664. And that's basically the uh, flipbook movie format that Cinelayer generated. And then we just reverse engineered it to create this new movie out of JPEG photos. So now when I go into Cinelayer, sort the files by date to make it easier to find the movie we just created. And then I'm just going to load that one file. And just like that, all 2,000 JPEGs load as a single movie file. The first step is matching the frame rate to the source material. But for now, I'm going to leave the width and the height 1080p. And something that's really helpful when editing time-lapse movies is to go into settings and enable play every frame. And for the scaling, reduce the scaling to low quality. So that'll give you the absolute fastest preview playback without dropping any frames. So right now the source material is still not the same as the project size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the source material to the same dimensions as the project. We go into the compositor window and right click and then we go down to show controls. Let me resize this window so it's easier to see. Now in the control pane we have a camera and a projector control. We want to go to the camera control and left click. And also we want to go to this question mark. We want to click on the question mark until this window appears showing you the current camera settings. So right now the camera zoom is what we're interested in. That's set to 1. I'm going to go into the compositor window. I'm going to hold down shift and then left click on the video and then move the mouse up. So when you hold down shift and move up and down you can scale the camera zoom. Now we need to zoom out so the source material fits in the project. It's going to be somewhere around 0.76. But I'm not going to get it very precise using the mouse. So I'm going to go into the camera, the camera dialog box. And what this allows you to do is more precisely adjust the zoom. So if we go to the first frame where everything is lit, it'll be easier to see. The source aspect ratio is not the same as the project. The source is a 35 millimeter frame and the project is going to be a 16 by 9 frame. So I'm going to go ahead and crop the top and the bottom off the source. But I'm just going to zoom in. I'm not going to move it up or down. And you can edit this more precisely by editing the text field. And then once the uh, scaling is configured, you go back to the compositor window and you hit this icon here and that clears away the camera editing. So now we have a uh, fully imported flipbook movie with the uh, frame being scaled to 1080p. Now it's not playing at real time because I selected play every frame in settings. But this is good for just previewing. If you want to have more precise timing you can go back into Preferences, deselect Play Every Frame, click OK, and then it'll give you accurate timing, but it's going to drop frames. That is essentially how you take a bunch of photos and make them into a movie.